Hello everybody and welcome back to another Blankum Drugov Ruby episode uh, 4 of volume 4 as per usual outro. Yeah, it's the episode name is Family and it had Yang in the uh, thumbnail so I do wonder ex 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 are we gonna get more of Yang because that would that would be preferable for me because it, well actually no. Anyone would be like lovely here. Um, most likely, it's gonna have to do with Yang, because uh, Yang or Vice or both of them, because the episodes have been structured in a very well good manner this time around. So they have been uh, they have been structured in a very cut and paste manner, so that there are different sequences in the middle of the episodes. So I do wonder exactly which one of them or both are we gonna get to this time around. Just the family title just kind of gives it away. Maybe. They are the two characters who are interacting with family. Although I suppose Blake could be just building up a new family of sorts. Still. And I suppose the junior... Uh, the, the, uh, I can't remember the name. Are the, uh, Ruby's new gang. That kind of a foster family. Still can't remember the name of that uh, the group, but well, I'm just trembling. Let's just get on with the show. I'm excited, as if it wasn't obvious. Oh, we're starting with this farmer boy once again. I wonder why. There's got to be something up with him. Hmm. What is this up? Is he actually going to be one of the maidens? That'd be kind of hilarious. Hello, I'm Professor Oswald. Okay. That was weird. That was odd. Oh, Yang's nightmare. <laughs> Look at the lighting! That's fantastical lighting effects, just... It's like cinematography, actually. It, it, it's almost as if they are actually using cinematography in this season. It's... or volume, rather. Like actual people who know like what the what proper cinematography is. Although the previous volumes already had quite a lot of that, and actually even beginning with the series they had a lot of interesting cinematography tricks that, but I wasn't aware of them at the time. I'm just trembling once again. Let's just continue. Oh, what a dream or a nightmare. Yes, a nightmare indeed. I love dream sequences and this is just done so... Just something about this art style just allows them to have such an ephemeral feeling to them. It's just... It's indescribable that... There's something indescribable about this scene that just is so fantastic. Uh, now she's lost those weapons. It's this. It, I love nightmare sequences. The pure horror on her face. Man, that's some good nightmare sequence. There's actually quite a lot of... Because, like I mentioned about cinematography just a second ago, they have a lot of cinematography tricks going on right now, such as using a lot of Dutch angles to... Like there, even in the previous set scene where they were... Oh, man! 
there's a lot of things to break down. Like in that episode, that previous shot where Yang was looking at her new arm and there, there was a Dutch angle and it was like pointing towards her rather menacing. There are so many tricks here that could be just broken down and just analyzed deeply. Like, what's up with that? They have gained like actual film directors here or something. This is fantastical. Oh! It honestly is like a, a lot. That, that is really familiar. Just having a bunch of friends just drinking and laughing together. That's actually kind of heartwarming. Although having just... Oh, really? Well, then you're not dedicated teachers enough. You should be just hammering away at those exams 24-7, you know? Yes, considering that she has lost her arm and has been in life-threatening battle, she should be considered an adult at this point. I mean, besides, how old is she at this point? If she's something like, okay, maybe if she's actually an something like 18 or 17, then I suppose maybe you should not consider her an adult yet, but except maybe legally. Don't know exactly how the legal system works in in Remnant, but still. Oh well. Adult or not, you still got a long way to go before you're ready for the real world. Oh my god, does every father figure just have the same condescending phrases? Yeah, but we only use them when we mean it. Is that so? As a matter of fact, it is so. <laughs> if you honestly think that you're ready to go out there on your own, <laughs> well, I guess you lost some brain cells along with that arm. Oh! Holy! <laughs> That's... That is... Ouch! You're a... That is... Jesus, that is cold. Uh, and they're just laughing it off. That is... Well, at the very least, it's discharging an awkward situation. It's pretty good to be able to laugh at your own problems, too, though, so... 
That is pretty good. Gold footing at the very least. Man, this is... It, it feels so bad to interrupt these scenes when they are done so freaking well, but... They are just framing these shots quite so freaking well. I really have to give props to the whoever was directing this, because... This, there's actually just fantastical direction in these scenes. Even though it's just a conversation, it's directed properly. And that's pretty fantastic. And that's pretty marvelous, I must say. But she might actually be have some kind of serious trauma about. Well, considering that Adam was the one who cut her arm off. If I remember that name correctly, I hope I do, because otherwise I'm gonna look really dumb with that sentence. Considering that Adam cut her arm off and did it so straightforwardly and just so... It was done so suddenly and it was yet done so deliberately, it honestly could leave per... It, like everlasting trauma on her so yeah it it recuperating from that is honestly probably not that easy and here i am just worried about the the actual measurements of that prosthetic whether that's going to be fitting for her arm or not This is actually somehow the somehow in these far more silent moments the sense of humor and the macabre darkness that this show has just feels so much more lively and natural than the actual humor parts of the show. It's really quite odd. Maybe I'm just a freak. That could be it. Maybe I just have a bad sense of humor. Hmm. And there it is. Her nemesis. A new arm. Hmm. 
That's dark. Begun by now. That's actually, uh, like I said in the previous <laughs> World of Remnant episode, um, I would believe that, assume that medium-sized cities would be actually fairly well protected considering that they had the manpower to protect them and the smaller size to give them some advantages such as smaller area or smaller places from which to attack them if they are built well that is That new armor looks really freaking good on Jean. And it's jinxed. They are definitely gonna encounter Grimm now. Well, yes. Oh? Crow! Have you been stalking them? Crow, Crow, have you been stalking them all this time? You are one hell of a mad god. <clears throat> He's freaking fantastic. Man, I just can't stop just man gasping over, just, just just fanboying over just freaking crows. He's just just too much for my poor little heart to handle. Ruby, you 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 had to check how many there were. Four, four, four prostitutes. <laughs> I mean people. <clears throat> I mean prostitutes are people, but man, that's a bad joke. That would explain their safe journey if Crow has been watching over them. Like a baby mother, baby bird, mother bird. Oh. That's mysterious. Who's that woman? Who is she? Who is she? And oh my god, those crimson eyes! Okay, not crimson, but just... That's a fantastic character design. That's about all I have to say. It's even so fantastic that even I'm getting blurred. Oh my gosh. Oh! Raven? Raven and Crow? That's... Those are pretty good family names. Or names that the family has chosen to give them. So... What do you want? A girl can't just catch up with her family. Yeah, but you're not. How about we get on? <laughs> Does she have it? Don't you know getting lost, Gerard? That's not 
not. Rhetorical question. I know you know. It's just obnoxious that you bring up family and carry on like your own daughter doesn't exist. Oh. Saved her. Once. Because that was your rule, right? Real mom of the year material, sis. I told you Beacon would fall, and it did. I told you Osborn would fail, and he has. Now you tell me. Does Salem have it? <laughs> I'm, I'm just fascinated by, by their choice of freaking cat. Just... Just look at this shot. It's fantastic shot for such an such an confront such a confrontation. It's it's literally them wrestling in the darkness. It's just just God damn it! That's a beautiful shot. That's just a fantastically well done shot. Just in cinematography name. That's just. I can't stop gushing over how good the cinematography of this show is. But you weren't interested in all of that. I just want to know what you're up against. Which we are you referring to? Come back later. The only way we beat her is. people now and as leader I will do everything in my power to ensure our survival I saw the people that she owns too the weak die the strong live those are the rules well you've certainly got someone strong on your side I've seen the damage we couldn't have known the groom would set in as quickly as they did I'm not talking I'm not talking about you. I don't know what Alec is. Then we have nothing left to talk about. I don't know where the Spring Maiden is either. You I need you to tell me. Why would I do that? Because without her, we're all going to die. <laughs> just. Just. Fantastic cinematography. I mean, there's such, just light, just light that just turn off at the same moment that her interest in this conversation ends. It's just how magnificently well done is this? And I know I'm not talking about the story because that is really freaking good here as well. But it's just more of the cinematography that I'm more impressed by. No, oh, she can teleport. Okay. Make this one a double. <laughs> oh, there's still one more scene. Hey, it actually looks pretty good. <laughs> oh, having character decides for this. Oh, I just Oscar. Okay, I actually and having the oh, I love seeing these just in production pictures because they just reveal so much information. It's just I love seeing these. Okay, but th that's about it. Let let let's see if there's any more. Draft shots. Hmm. I mean, I would order. I would. 
Uh, I would give Crow a drink. Just... Man, that's dark and dreary looking. How did this episode pass by so quickly? I didn't even realize. Huh. Okay. Man, that is... What a hell of an episode. Now, admittedly, it didn't have Vice in it, but it had another family. And that is Ruby and Crow and now Raven as well. And that is just so... Such an interesting revelation, I think, because we have... I don't think we have seen that beforehand, Raven. That's just... And I love her design. It looks so unique and so striking. It's pretty fantastic, I must say. Um, I also, I just, I, I know I gushed on so much in this episode about cinematography, but it honestly seems like they actually hired someone who has actual experience in film directing, because a lot of the shots were framed so fantastically well, and just took full advantage of the fact that it's animation, and they can take advantage of just all the lot of, a lot of different just uh, camera angles and having them placed in such a way that it would be normally impossible such as inside the table like that that's just and having it sh just I'm gushing a lot because I love how much cinematography had had gone into this episode because a lot of the shots just are so fantastically well done but it's time to talk about the story because that's something that I neglected to talk about for the whole episode because it is certainly pretty fun to see. It's pretty meaningful to see Crow follow Ruby around because that means not only that actually kind of takes away from the sense of danger from their journey, which is admittedly actually kind of bad because it makes us certain that there won't be any real danger that they won't be able to confront because Crow will be always watching like a baby mo bird mother. But that's completely fine. I'm fine with that because that means we get more of Crow and... Oh man, I love... Just... I have a little bit of a man crush on Crow because... Just... All about him just... Just is... Just done, done so well. As well as that's uh, all the scenes with Yang because... As I expected, we got quite a lot of scenes with her. And she has finally taken the first step to moving forward for, from her well, nightmares, and trying to relieve herself of those. And that's really represented so freaking well with that final scene with her just flexing her, her arm and just getting ready to start training again. And that is really meaningful for her character. That's about all I have to say for now. So thank you all very much for watching. I hope to you in the future have a great day and stay awesome. Ganmu out.